Well, good evening to you all, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. This is Pastor Jay. I speak and I decree the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I declare that this will be a successful, a healthy, and a prosperous new year. I'm going to be praying for you all year long as I customarily do, and I'm believing that as we grow in godliness, our lives will exponentially increase spirit, soul, body, social and financial increase. I'm believing it. I'm receiving it. I'm declaring and decreeing it over our lives in Jesus name. Hey, I'm excited to share the word with you today. We're going to start with part two of a series we started last year, even last week, entitled Beware of the thorns and so i want to go to god in prayer because we always want to ensure that the holy spirit is involved in what we're doing and then we'll dive right into part two so father god i just first of all i thank you for bringing us safely into this new year that you have ordained and created before the foundation of the world i pray that each and every one of us will rise to our full potential this year that we will grow in the knowledge of you that we will live according to your divine plan and agenda for each and every one of our lives. And I thank you for every person that will tune in to this particular teaching today, Lord God. I pray that they receive wisdom and revelation knowledge as we fellowship around your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that my anointing to teach will couple with the anointing of your people to hear. And that as those anointings merge, wisdom, revelation, knowledge will flow freely. We believe it and we receive it and we thank you for it even now. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's get right into it. Uh, again, we're discussing our lesson topic, Beware of the Thorns. Beware of the Thorns. And we read last week from Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter 4. I'm not going to read the entire account of the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils, depending on uh, how you relate to the word. I will read verses three and seven and then read verses 18 and 19 because I want to focus on primarily the thorns that we're learning about in this lesson. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible today. So in Mark chapter four, uh, at verse starting at verse three, it says, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And then in verse seven, it says, and some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no crop. Uh, King James verse says it yielded no fruit. Then as we skip down to verses 18 and 19, Jesus is explaining the parable to the disciples. In verse 18, he says, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Now, just to cover a little bit of what we discussed last week, uh, it is our responsibility to not let the cares of this world strip or rob us of our fruitfulness. We cannot allow the cares and we learn that cares are synonymous with distractions. Uh, the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, these are distractions that pull us away from spending time with our Father and spending time in the Word. And we cannot allow the cares of this world or a preoccupation with things to rob us of our fruitfulness or our productivity. Uh, Satan does not want our attention geared towards the word because he knows from experience that he is powerless against God's word. The last thing Satan wants you to do is to spend quality time in the word. Because what happened with Jesus in the temptation? 
Satan showed up after 40 days of fasting. Jesus was fasting 40 days in the wilderness. After those 40 days and 40 nights, Satan shows up because Jesus is at his most weakest state physically. But because he's been fasting and praying, he's probably at his strongest state spiritually. And so Satan shows up with temptation, trying to distract Jesus and pull Jesus off course. And Jesus responded three times with what we have to respond with. It is written. Jesus counteracted Satan's temptation with the written word. So Satan has no answer for the word of God. And he does not want you to be acclimated or accustomed to the word, because when you become accustomed to the word, you become dangerous. You become an active threat. Listen to this. We learned this last week. If the enemy cannot destroy you, he will settle for distracting you. And that's so key because Satan walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if he can't destroy you or devour you, he will settle for distracting you. He'll do anything in his power to keep you from operating by the word of God, because that's where our power is. Jesus said, I, I gave them the word. He said, they're in the world, but they're not of the word. He says, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. He said, I gave them what separates them from the world. It's the word. And we have to be dedicated and devoted to the word of God and not allow thorns, the thorns of cares, the thorns of distraction, the thorns of anxiety to rob us of our devotion and our dedication to the word of God. So we have to ask ourselves, are we devoted to God or are we distracted from God? We saw a, a, a real a clear example of that in Luke last week and so i wanted to go there again because the spirit of god uh, wanted me to drop one statement in particular from that text that i did not share with you last week so in luke chapter 10 we're looking at verses 38 through 42 i'll read the entire uh passage again as i did last week it says now it happened as they went as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him, welcomed Jesus into her house, Jesus and his disciples. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. But Martha, listen to this. This is one of the reasons why I enjoyed the New King James Version this week, because it went straight to the point. Verse 40 says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. She was what? She was distracted. If Satan cannot destroy you, he will distract you. If Satan cannot uh, cause calamity, he will settle for distraction. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She wasn't doing anything evil. She wasn't doing anything wrong. She was just doing things out of priority. Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care? We're going to talk about this in a moment. Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. I can see him shaking his head. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Sound familiar? Are you worried and troubled about many things? Let's see what Jesus says about it. But one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. In other words, Jesus was saying Mary is listening to the word and I'm not going to deprive her of that privilege. She's doing the needful thing. She's doing what's needed for the moment. She's hearing the word preached. And we know what happens when we hear the word preached, right? Faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word. And so Mary was positioned to do what needed to be done. She was hearing the word. Martha had been pulled out of position and she focused on serving, which ultimately became a distraction. Now, in verse 40, I want to read that again and I want to show you this is the reason why I came back to Luke 10 today, because the spirit of God wanted me to communicate this to you. And in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 40, it says, but Martha, now Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to the word. 
Martha comes to Jesus because Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you? She had the problem with Mary, but instead of going to Mary, she went to Jesus. And a lot of people will do that. They'll have a problem with you, but instead of coming to you, they'll go to somebody else that's close to you. Listen to this. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. What did the spirit of God want me to show you from that? People who are enveloped with care, distracted about many things, will often try to offload their cares onto other people. You, 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 I'm sure you've experienced that people who are enveloped or consumed or distracted or worried or troubled about many things. Yeah, they'll try to offload their cares onto you. That's what Martha did to Jesus. She said, look, she was distracted with much serving. So she approached Jesus and said, hey, don't you care? Because I'm wrapped up in care. I'm so cared up over here. I'm so mad at Mary. Mary see me over here struggling and she had moved. So she approaches Jesus and says, hey, I'm caught up in care. You should care. You will have people get upset with you because you don't care like they care. You're not worried. You're not stressed out. You're not losing sleep. And so they feel as though you don't love them or or you're not concerned because you are not at the level of anxiety that they are on. You are not at the level of trouble that they are on. Don't be trapped and fooled into worry and deception. You can't afford to fall into the trap of worry. You cannot afford to fall into the trap of distraction because when you fall into worry and when you fall into distraction, oftentimes you're falling out of faith. When you fall into worry and it's a trap and when you fall into distractions, it's a trap. You often fall out of faith. Don't let people who are enveloped with care offload their cares onto you. Now, you might hurt some feelings. They might get upset because you're not responding like they feel like you should have responded. They're telling you their sob story. They're telling you what what happened and how it impacted them. And if you don't respond appropriately, they then get upset with you. Well, what you can do is pray for them in private. They don't even have to know what you're doing. Pray for them in private that, that they be delivered. If all we want them to be is delivered, then we don't care who's get, we don't want credit for. It. We're not trying to say, well, hey, you got delivered because I was praying for you. You said I wasn't doing nothing, but I was actually praying for you. I just didn't tell you. That's not even a conversation you need to have. Just pray in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward openly. And as long as they are delivered from what they're dealing with, we don't care who gets the credit. Amen. I thought that was important. The spirit of God laid that on my heart and I believe it was necessary to share with you. Let's look at part two. Let's go into part two because I got several things I want to share with you today. And to launch part two, let's turn to Philippians chapter four, Philippians chapter four. Another one of these what they call Pauline epistles, Philippians chapter four. And let's look at verses six and seven. And again, we're reading from the New King James Version of the Bible today. It says, be anxious. King James Version says, be careful. Careful and anxious are synonymous. Be anxious for nothing. <laughs> not, not some things warrant your anxiety. No. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Look at verse seven. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen to this, because this is this. Yeah, I won't read that again. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, not a few things, in everything by prayer and supplication, definite request with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understand and all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Now, listen to this. 
allowing ourselves to become anxious and distracted robs us of God's peace, making our hearts and minds vulnerable to satanic attack. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna say it again. I just want that to I just want that to rest for a moment and then I'll reiterate it. Allowing ourselves and I say allowing on purpose and I'll show you why later on. Allowing ourselves to become anxious and distracted robs us of God's peace, thereby making our hearts and minds vulnerable to attack. We, how you, where, where, you, where you get that from, Pastor Jay? What do you mean? Well, it says be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts. So if the peace of God guards my heart and guards my mind, if I don't receive his peace, then that means my heart and my mind is open to attack. See, if the peace of God is guarding my heart and guarding my mind, and if I reject peace and embrace anxiety, fear, worry, and stress, then my heart and my mind, and heart is a reference to your spirit, my heart and my mind is not guarded. And anything that's not guarded runs the risk of being infiltrated. I'll say that again. Anything that is not guarded runs the risk of being infiltrated infiltrated hmm and listen to this once satan gains access to your mind he starts wreaking havoc in other areas of your life many of us i won't say many i gotta check not to say many there are some of us whose lives are out of control because Satan is calling the shots in our minds. We haven't renewed our minds to the truth of God's word. And so our minds are exposed and vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. We're stressed out. We're fearful. We're worried. We're depressed. We're, we're, we're faithless. We're, we're all sorts of things. That's because Satan has access to our minds and from the mind, he is wreaking havoc, which means causing disorder and damage in other areas of our lives. One way we can put a stop to it is to stop caring so much. Stop caring so much. Stop caring what people think. Stop caring how people will respond. Stop caring about what it'll look like. Did God approve it? Did God ordain it? Is God standing with you? If God before you, who can be against you? And if God before you, doesn't matter what anybody else is anybody else is saying, and it doesn't matter what anybody else is thinking. Mm, we need to stop caring so much. Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things, but only one thing is needful. Too many things on our plate. Too many things vying for our attention. Only one thing is needed. Listen to this. Satan must be resisted in the faith. You don't, hey, ooh, you better not. You don't try to resist Satan in your own strength. You, you know, you're no match. You can't do anything in your own strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but you don't do it in your own strength. Willpower won't get it. You got to resist Satan in the faith. Let's look at first Peter chapter five. Yeah, 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 yeah. The just shall live by faith. And part of living by faith is resisting the onslaught of the enemy and to resist. Hey, resist the devil and he'll flee. Not fight. You're not supposed to fight the devil. Resist him. We submit to God. We resist the devil and then he has to flee. So the way we uh, resist in the faith is to remind ourselves of what the word has declared. In first Peter, that's good. Remind yourself of what the word has declared. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you feel. Don't even be moved by what you think, because what you think can be totally opposed to the word of God. Only be moved by what you believe. And we must believe God's word in first Peter chapter five. Uh, verses eight and nine. And I'll read the first part of verse nine. It says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil 
walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, I write notes in my Bibles and in my Bible, I wrote this note between lion and seeking. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, lying, seeking whom he may devour. So how is he um, seeking who he can devour? By introducing lies. He introduces the lie. Hath God said? That's what he did to Eve. He introduced alternate theories. He introduced another way, another slant, another way to digest what God has said. He introduced deception. Satan walks about as a roaring lion, lion, <laughs> seeking whom he may devour. And verse nine says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Resist him. The Lord resists you, Satan. Resist him. Don't fight him. He's a totally defeated foe. Jesus came so he could destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Satan is defeated. So you don't have to fight him. Anybody that's fighting Satan, you, you fight a losing battle. Why are you fighting? Why are you fighting someone that has already been defeated? The Bible doesn't tell us to fight the devil. The Bible tells us to resist the devil. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he must flee. So the peace of God is the key to being free of anxiety and God's peace. Ooh, listen to this. The peace of God is the key to being free of anxiety and God's peace won't spring up until cares are cast down. Just like the seed and the thorns, those thorns were growing up over the, 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 the seed that was beginning to grow from the soil and the thorns choked the word. The thorns choked the produce and it became unfruitful. It's not that it wasn't producing. It just got overrun by thorns. And that's what happens in our lives. There's a little bit of production there, but then it gets overrun by the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. All that stuff rises up. All those thorns rise up, choking the word. And then we become unfruitful. Our hearts becomes unfruitful. Our hearts become unfruitful. So the peace of God is the key to being free of anxiety. And God's peace won't spring up until cares are cast down. Let's look at Matthew chapter six, because Jesus was very clear on the topic. We should not worry. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. We should not worry. In Matthew six, when Jesus is this repetitive, it shows how important the principle he is relaying is. Um, in verse 25 of Matthew chapter six, it says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at verse 27. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Worrying is like trying to get yourself to grow. It's not going to produce. That's what Jesus is saying. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? None of you can add an inch to your height by worrying. Neither can you add any re resolutions to your situation by worrying. He said, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Look at verse 31. He's so repetitive here. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Listen to this. This is another reason why you should not worry. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Why are we worried when our father knows what we need? Remember, we resist in the faith. 
I don't have to worry about what I need because my father knows what I need. And I trust my father to supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes all grace abound toward me so that I always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So why would I worry when my father knows what I have need of? And he's a good father. And so I trust him to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then for good measure in verse 34, Jesus says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. How are we going to do it? How's it going to happen? What is going to happen? When are we going to have it? How are we going to do it? What is, hey, hey, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Now, I'm not telling you to be lazy. I'm not telling you to be uh, negligent with your responsibilities. Listen to this. But when you, but when, <laughs> But when what you feel begins to override what you believe, you have entered into the care zone. When you believe that God loves you and he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, but you start feeling like he's forgotten about you, you start feeling like this time it might not work, you entered into the care zone. I'll say it again. When what you feel begins to override what you believe, that means your head and your emotions have gotten in the way of your heart. When you feel and what you feel overrides what you believe, then you have entered into the care zone. Don't let what you feel. Don't let what you think. Don't let what it looks like override the faith in your heart. Remember, we resist in the faith. The just shall live by faith. What is faith? I believe the word of God. I speak the word of God and I act in agreement with the word that I speak and I believe. That's, the, that's, that's faith. Faith is acting, speaking, and believing the word of God. I believe what God said, I speak in agreement with what God said, and I move according to what God said in his word. So when what I feel starts to override what I believe, I've entered into the care zone. Listen to this, it's not automatic, we have to choose not to be troubled. We must choose not to be worried. We must choose not to be anxious. What do you mean, Pastor Jay? Well, stuff is going to come at you all the time. Stuff, look, stuff going to come at you every day, all day, for the rest of your days. When it comes, no matter how large or small it is on the scale, you have to choose not to be troubled. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, peace, this is Jesus talking, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Look at this. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, if he said, let not your heart be troubled, that means it's our responsibility and we have to choose not to be troubled. He didn't say that trouble won't come your way. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Now, he's not saying that you're not going to have some stuff pop up in life because you're going to have issues in life. We live in a fallen, dark, sin riddled world. Creation is grown and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. OK, so this world got some issues and because we're in it, but we're not of it, we're going to have to deal with some issues. The key is to not allow ourselves to be troubled when trouble comes. Although trouble may come, I choose not to be troubled and I choose not to be afraid. Why? Because a troubled heart is a thorny heart that if not corrected will ultimately become unfruitful. And you can't afford to be unfruitful. You can't afford to be unproductive. In this season especially, you cannot afford to be unproductive. God wants us to be productive. God has created us to <laughs> be fruitful and multiply, subdue, have dominion. In other words, God says, I want you to produce. I want you to be productive in everything you put your hands to. And one of the ways that production is stymied is through trouble, care, fear, anxiety, worry. 
beware of the thorns. I choose to be at peace. I choose to receive the peace of God. I choose to walk in oneness with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If he told me not to let my heart be troubled, I won't let my heart be troubled. And Lord, I receive the grace to act in agreement with your word. That's what you got to do when you don't feel like you got enough. Lord, I receive your grace to act in agreement with your word because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You want to go to the next level in God? You want to walk closer with him, more intimately than with him than you've ever been before? Stop caring so much. Stop caring what other people think. Stop caring what what other people are saying. Stop caring about the optics, what it's going to look like. How they going to treat me if I start talking about you more, Lord? Hey, stop caring so much. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Amen. Beware of the thorns. Because if you know Mark 4, you got the wayside ground, you got the stony ground, and you got the thorny ground. If you can bypass those thorns, guess where you find yourself? Good ground. And that's when you yield 30, 60, or 100 fold. That's when you're in increased productivity. And we're close. I speak that by the Spirit of God. We're close. Many of the body of Christ are in that thorny area where we know the word. The word has been heard. The word is in our heart. But those thorns, the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things are outpacing and outgrowing the word that we've heard. Stop caring so much. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Let the peace of God stand as a guard over your heart and mind so that the faith that is it within you can grow and develop and bring you into a fruitful place. Amen. Well, praise God. That's all I've got for you today. That's that's a wrap on our series. Beware of the thorns. Just a two week real quick session. If you haven't already, go back and watch lesson one and then pair it with today's lesson. And I believe you're going to receive some divine instruction from God moving forward. Amen. Well, remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service. And your success is in God's word. I love you all. I'm praying for you all. Be blessed in Jesus name.